Hello, everyone. Welcome to It's Sybil. I am Sybil Wilkes. Oh, he's like half staff today. Uh, welcome in to all the guys. And uh, no man likes to have that pointed out to him. I realize that. Sorry about that. Never at all. Never, never, never. Uh, good luck. Never good luck. <laughs> Um, saying hello and good afternoon, good evening to one and all. Cameron Riley, how are you? Good evening, Sybil. Good evening, everybody. Feeling great. Uh, managed to drop my ballot off. Uh, so uh, got the vote in for the primary election. Looking forward to the results. Uh, some real um, discomforting people on the ballot this year. Oh, discomforting. And and yes. uh, uh, I'm not sure what that means, but perhaps you'll explain when we get into this. And uh, Damon, it was election day for you as well. Did you uh, do your civic duty? Damn. All right, you voted. There you go. Oh, look at you guys. <laughs> There's no way I could come on here today and not have voted. <laughs> not yes. after last week, surely. Um, definitely not to hear you ask that question. I'm like, plus, it was nice out. I rode my bike up to the polling place. It was cool. I met a couple of older ladies and took pictures with them and as the workers. And oh, it was a cool nice. little situation. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. And to the other half of the group uh, who does not do his civic duty. Hello, Med. How are you? How you doing? How you doing? Doing all right. Now, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me uh, bring that up real quick. Okay. So <laughs> I was at church on Sunday and uh -huh. there were a bunch of people in there of uh the electable uh, variety uh -huh. and uh they were all having pins and telling you know, vote for me and i'm just like weren't the primaries last week what are we doing you know then I, I i know i missed it i was like what are we doing they, they were like, yeah that was for the oh, presidency what, you're talking about the county and and, and all that right, right 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 and they were like yeah yeah no no that, the primaries were just for the presidency right you know for us for all the state Once legislature the county, the mayor, yeah. all that stuff that's in may i'm like <laughs> well, they do break it up, and and just like in in Illinois, you know, you'll have the mayoral stuff in a what is it another year or so? Uh, but yeah, they do oh, break man. it up. You but, know, I know they break it up like like different years, but I didn't know. I I thought you know once that year came, I thought everything just got smashed on one primary, wow. and it's not. So I get the chance to redeem myself. But you will really redeem yourself because as we it talk may. about, yeah, as we talk about. Uh, those are the elections that have a greater impact on your, your absolutely. Life. So yeah. now that I know that I only missed the presidential, which it really didn't matter because it's Biden. And, and you really and didn't Trump. miss it because no. you think about, but no. it was just fun, just kind of you know chastising me. It's all right. It's yeah. okay. Yeah. It is all right. I am here to be chastised for missing that, but now I feel a whole lot better knowing that the important stuff I did not miss. So I'll be voting in May or whenever it is, and. uh be doing my civic duties to, you know, try and stop the building of multiple more <laughs> liquor stores in my neighborhood. <laughs> Let me ask you this. I was thinking about this because someone was saying today, I was listening to a, a program and someone was saying they took their 18 year old to vote for the first time. When you were younger, did your parents take you when they went to vote? No, my dad wasn't a citizen. Uh, so when I was, I started voting, he became a citizen. Oh, nice. Okay. After. And so I started voting. So I took him to go oh, vote. You took your dad. <laughs> That's very cool. That's very cool. That's I very took cool. him to go vote. So, uh, cool. yeah. What about you, Cameron? I want to say my first, not my first legal election was Obama. Maybe the one before that. But I remember going myself to early vote because I didn't want to do the crowds, uh, put the ballot in. and uh, <laughs> No, but when you were a kid, did your mom or dad oh, take you with did they them ever take when they went to vote? Yeah. No, nope, not at all. Oh, interesting. And, and Damon, what about you? No, I didn't have that experience with my mother. Um, so I would say no to that. And my first electable or eligible election, I was... Uh, it was Harold Washington, so I was real fired up to do it because we had already been working in the community to get yeah. him in there. So, yeah. Yeah. That was um, that. That was the first uh, mayoral, I, I would say the first mayoral uh, election for me of consequence uh, with with uh, Mayor Washington, but um, in a very proud moment uh, to cast that vote. Um, the others, not so much. Uh, although I will say that um, 
the old man Daly was the mayor for most was for all of my early years. And uh, I remember when he died and it was just like a, a pall cast over the city and uh, right. like, what are we going to do? And uh, but it was even greater. And I was I was working in uh, Florida at the time. It was even greater uh, being a thousand miles away from Chicago when Mayor Washington passed away. Mm-hmm. It was, it yeah, was, was really, really cool. yeah. Daily, it's not been Daily, in the same sense. Right. Yeah. yeah. Daily one was like Putin. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> All right. No. Yeah. It's like, uh, who won? Who won? Right. <laughs> <laughs> you have the nerve to challenge. It was even a question. Exactly. Exactly. So, uh, interesting times in Chicago politics. Uh, I'm glad that, uh, you all did get out and, and did get to vote. And, uh, um, I look forward to your contest in May and, and talking about that, Ned. Um, Fulton County, mm-hmm. that is, that's going to be uh, really interesting um, as the district attorney is going to be running for re-election. And I believe the judge in that case, in the Trump case that she is, uh, she's arguing, uh, she uh, is Stephen McAfee or M- McAfee, um, is also running for election to keep his judgeship. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's going to be really interesting. All right, so let's move to uh, talk about the What You Need to Know newsletter. This is our Monday through Friday newsletter, which we uh, seek to super serve the African American community, talking about uh, subjects that are of interest and also uh, affect our community uh, in in more ways than one, I would say. And it is an absolutely free newsletter, and we send it via email. We'd love to have you join us. If you are not already subscribing, please go to SybilWilkes.com. Give us your name and your email address, and we'll have it in your email box every Monday through Friday morning. And uh, that's all you need to give us. You don't have to tell us any you know, your age or anything like that if you uh, don't want to. Um, but you can always drop us a note and tell us if you you know when your birthday is, and we'll we'll put it in and give you a birthday shout out. Um, and I learned the most interesting things by watching uh, the playback of our shows, and uh, and I'll talk about that. But how people uh, really uh, have formed a community of sorts in watching this show, as well as those who read the newsletter and the things that they share with each other. Um, uh, Cameron Riley is our political contributor, and his sister Quinn Townsend Riley is our LGBTQIA plus contributor. And Coy Malone is social justice, and Miss Aprilette Russell, as she likes to be called, is our uh, mental health and wellness contributor. All these young people do fine jobs in talking about the issues of the day, and especially from their young perspectives. And Cameron uh, gets into the weeds of a roundtable discussion held by Vice President Kamala Harris at the White House. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> so, so, so tell us what happened, Cameron. Yeah, um, today we're going to talk about uh cannabis or as anyone over 50 calls it uh reefer okay Um, hey 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 (laughs) uh kamala harris i resemble uh, that comment (laughs) (laughs) i don't and and i don't know anybody who does That made <laughs> she said, I don't, uh-uh, don't put me in that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe my grandparents, no, my grandparents would not double with anybody. Talking my grandma still calls her Rifa. See? See? Yes, sir. Uh, but yeah, uh, Kamala Harris and uh, uh, Fat Joe um, and a bunch of other legislators and uh, community advocates uh, sat down for uh, a circle to, to talk about uh, the legalization of marijuana, marijuana legis- uh, legis- 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 legislation, and um, what uh, like federal uh, protections of marijuana use looks like across the country. And uh, I did a bit of research, and even though uh, the usage of cannabis, medical or otherwise, um, has become a lot more commonplace, there are still a lot of states that consider it very illegal, highly Ill- Ill- illegal. Uh, they still consider it a class one drug up there with uh, heroin, um, as mm-hmm. uh, as some of our distinguished elders refer to it. Um, <laughs> and so uh, <laughs> Kamala Harris uh, is uh, Kamala Harris is um, convening these community entities uh, to discuss. Um, how the Biden administration is is 
continuing to expunge marijuana convictions at the federal level, um, because we know that those drastically uh, impacted the black community, um, came coming off of the war on drugs. Um, Likewise, uh, she had a couple of um, conservative lawmakers in in the room from southern states, Mississippi, um, Midwestern states such as Missouri, um, some from Texas as well, uh, where and the marijuana... governor of uh, Kentucky, a Democrat, which is unusual for for Kentucky, um, uh, Andy yeah. Bashir was also a part of that, right? Yeah, yeah, and he's and, on the uh, younger side, of younger end of that. Yeah, and in the most obscure states, I mean, like uh, Kentucky, of course, um, Florida, marijuana is still illegal, um, and it's definitely a popular subject with uh, younger with uh, younger voters as um, like marijuana based businesses are beginning to expand. That is a new market for, you know, black people to get in and uh, make their, and make their, and make their, and make their, and make their fortunes. Um, the interesting thing apart about it though, is that um, as her history, as a prosecutor, Kamala Harris was responsible for a lot of marijuana related convictions right. like over like 1500 of them. And like, obviously she's a career politician. Sure. But, um, I would just wish that politicians would like say why they changed their mind. And like, she did she? Uh, in her memoir, she wrote that she believes that weed should be legal, um, but that's pretty much it. She hasn't right. really explained how she's seen the light or seen uh, the spark, uh, so to speak. We celebrated um, fifty years of hip hop at our house and saw the light. <laughs> and smell the reefer. Uh, okay. <laughs> She's like, hey, this is not. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> Why am I so hungry? Um, <laughs> yeah. I heard that. Oh, ever heard a triangle in that song? <laughs> <laughs> Was it just me, Doug? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go ahead, Cam. My bad. Oh, no, it's cool. Um, uh, <sighs> I, I, uh, I thought there was just like a, another like very human part of the conversation that's missing. Marijuana and like THC related products are widely accessible now. Um, a record number of young people are are using it uh, younger and younger. I've known people who have smoked weed since they were 10. Uh, wow. Mm, that's yeah. tough. Cool. Yes. <laughs> yeah, they've had a pretty hard life. But um, and, and likewise, I mean, I, I think people on the show can I, I, in states where it is decriminalized, you can smell it absolutely everywhere. And uh, I don't really care what it is that anyone says, marijuana smells terrible. It's always smelled terrible. Uh, so I am wondering, as we begin to decriminalize it and legalize it a lot more, I mean, how do we uh, just protect people who shouldn't be using it, you know, younger than the age of 25, when your frontal lobe is fully developed? Uh, so uh, let, let's think uh, realistically about that. Do you think that that is a legitimate age that they can, and not that it's going to stop anybody from getting it, you know, illegally, but it, do you think that is a legitimate age of, amongst the three of you to to say this is where you can start smoking legal weed? No, I mean, like in today's world, 25 is probably way too old. Um, I, the average person starts smoking weed at like 15. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I, I would say um, 18, you know, just... 18 as the 18 as the cutoff. Um, but marijuana is just being engineered to be extremely potent nowadays, potent to the to the point of, uh, you know, psycho, psychedelic levels. Uh, and uh, I just want to, you know, just like protect the young people out here um, who choose to partake, you know, make sure that, that they partake uh, safely. Now, I ask this, you guys, as one who has never smoked. Okay, uh, weed. I've smoked cigarettes, but I've never smoked weed, and and so I I, I know I know, <laughs> and and trust and believe when I admitted this the first time, it was like I had a big L on you know my forehead for a loser, um, <laughs> but I just it's never um, it. I mean, it was offered and and even by people I work with, but I just never you know felt the the desire to, right, but, right, but right. realistically speaking, do you, what do you think about that entry age of, of legal, making it legal for 18 years up and up as Cameron has said? Well, let's go with everything else that you can do at 18, mm-hmm. um, like vote and go to war, right. um, those two things, but also, I mean, it should be treated, I, I would say like alcohol, yeah. but the only problem with that, 
if you wait till 21, like alcohol, so many people can be penalized and mess up their lives at an early age because they're experimenting with weed or they got weed in their car and they got weed wow. in their pocket. And so I would say 18 just to keep people from catching like horrendous cases and, and ruining their future. Uh, as Cameron mentioned, there are people that smoke weed as early as 10 years old. Um, I think I puffed a joint one time in sixth grade. Um, yeah, but I turned out all right. Um, and Did you keep was, doing it at six? At six so what is that, 11? Well, no, that's when I started selling it. Remember, I had the 10-speed bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> I do remember your your bicycle delivery, yeah. No, no, yeah, that was actually uh, high school age, though. But yeah, um, no, I didn't keep doing it, but I, I know it was around, mm -hmm. and um, a lot of those people didn't turn out so great. Hmm. And, and um, what about you, man? Uh, you know, I Ed agree. Doesn't with... look like he smokes weed. No, no, I, I don't. I, I don't. I have, but I, I don't. Um, I stopped once. I uh, one of my friends got creative. Uh, with, <laughs> with 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 the strain, if you will, mm -hmm. and I was high for two days. So you know, you know, and then bursting in, yeah, b bursting into laughter during a lecture, uh, in college, uh, when people walked in because her shoes were extremely loud when she touched the floor with every <laughs> step, and I pointed out to everybody in there, man, her her, her shoes are loud. <laughs> 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 that was the last day I smoked food. <laughs> Uh, it's not yeah, like you I had was, the first batch of that loud man. <laughs> I was I have never felt like this in my life. So yeah, that was wow. done after that. Um, but um, you know, and and like and like uh, Sybil, when I was sixteen, I took a trip to like a high school trip to Scandinavia. Mm -hmm. And when you're sixteen, there's a lot of more things you can do freedom, in, in, yeah. in in Europe when when you can try things. So I was in these places trying all. Soda tobacco. I was those little cob pipes and stuff like that, and they had the flavored tobacco. And I was like, "Oh wait, this tastes good. I can't mm -hmm. do this. I'll be smoking this all damn day." Wow, <laughs> but you had the presence of mind to recognize that. Oh no, I've been, I've been, I'd have been six years old with a cob pipe back in the states. It's like <laughs> Popeye. I'm like, we're not gonna do this. We're not. We're not gonna. We're, gonna, we're not gonna do this. So uh, let but, me ask you this: As a Jamaican, is your father disappointed in you? <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a funny thing. My father, my father was one of those Jamaicans that looked down on it. Mm. My father, was, you know, there, you know, there's a, there's a, there's, you know, there's a distinction in the country where you know you have those those people that look down on it, hate that it represents their country so much, and, and things like right. that. So I was, that was who my dad was. So right. my brother smokes all the time, and my dad hates it. But mm. um, but yeah, but like like, like uh, Damon said, you know, with, with 21 being the age, you know, legal age of drinking. You know, I'm 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 in that mindset, but I also understand what he's saying with the um the 18 year old and you know getting started mm -hmm. legally smoking weed can get you caught up um at an older age uh because I know a few people that started like when they're in their 40s I'm like how why right. <laughs> you know you just right, right here, you know Damon you know you know some of the same people that started in the age of 40 I do. And 50 and I'm just like how did we get here. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I'm 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 all for honestly 18 years old and just treating it like a lot of stuff that 18 year olds can are are, are legally able to do because most of these kids are smoking 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. That's that's kind of the, the, the time that they get in there. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I think this is um a really interesting discussion and I and I'd like to um perhaps uh, continue it at another time. We we are running a little short in this segment, and we do need to get to um, our question of the day, which is, when was the first time you got high? No, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, but um, I do want to thank you, Cameron, for that and and starting a conversation. I'm really curious about uh, the uh, the vice president and when she made it, because I saw that in her book too, and it was not clear as to why, or was there a moment, or was it a politically motivated uh, change that she made? Um, because she really did make her bones on a lot of those th those uh, putting a lot of people in jail. Yeah, yeah, on those cases for sure. And, and, and so, it. yeah, well, you know, you just start stacking them up. I guess. Yeah. And 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 it's like, like a source of pride for her. Yeah, you're doing good. Keep going. And yeah. and so um and and now you know she really is the voice right for yeah. this and um, much more than the president who who still you know believes that it's a gateway drug and and all of that old school 
uh, conversation that you hear from folks. Um, so I, I would like to uh, talk about this at another time and, and, and perhaps go into it a little bit more and about the racial disparities of people who have the licenses now to sell this. My God brother is one of those right. works for a company where black people who are discriminated most in the in the sentencing and the arrests and sentencing um, are, are those who are not able to get the licensing to, right. in yeah, order to yeah. sell it legally now, which is just bizarre. You would think, you know, you were the most disparaged and you should have an opportunity to make money from this now. And, and it, they're not seeing it that way. So. That's why I think there should be more black cotton farmers. <laughs> Get it. I'm just saying that we should have that industry on lock, man. Lock. We should own it. That is so funny and so true. But you know, people like Tom Dorders, I don't even want to have cotton in my, you know, in my name. I don't even like yeah. to wear cotton. You know, it's like Whoa. <laughs> We should we should uh, turn about as fair play. Um, let's move to uh, what's really going on, and that's our question of the day. And um, this is a fun question. Uh, I, I had so much fun. We're talking about your favorite potatoes. And uh, this was given to me by a real television watcher. So uh, an easy question. What's your favorite TV commercial these days? What, mm. are, what are those commercials? Are, and are, if you, are you one of those who has uh, streaming platforms in which you pay not to have advertising? Or do you just fast forward if you can uh, when you record things? I can easily say that because of the Super Bowl, it has to be the Jennifer Lopez Dunkin' Donuts with Ben Affleck and Tom Brady. That is the stupidest commercial in the world. It is, it is the dumbest, yeah. Matt Damon the dumbest there, thing, right? but Matt Damon sold it. Ben Affleck was all in and Tom Brady was there. It was ignorant. Fat Joe made an appearance. It was yeah, just dumb. Yeah, it was yeah. just, and, but, but is it one of, I don't see it a lot, but Ben Affleck got a great partnership with Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. Um, but like the Super Bowl is the only time that I pay attention to commercials. Uh, and and to to see them that kind of stand out, like I could, you know, you know, back in the day, you could really, you know, you you know, five eight eight three, you know, two three hundred, you know, you, you we Empire. had these exactly, we had these staples, uh, you know, called J G Wentworth, eight, you know, they, right? <laughs> and like Kirby enthusiasm has been playing with that in this uh in in their final season, so yeah. we don't really have commercials like that anymore, uh, that really stand out, you know, we don't have sitcoms with intros anymore yeah. that <laughs> we are living we don't have that kind of stuff anymore so <laughs> it is uh you know so that ben affleck uh j-lo dunkin donuts commercials we don't even have theme songs for most tv no, shows now at all what happened to the, world? the show just starts yeah the show just, starts. The show just starts. and then it's like bam here you go yeah, exactly okay. because they, they're they, like, use things, they, they use that theme song time for commercials exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> it's the whole commercial you miss singing that song exactly that's a, second in there, boy, 30 second if for real that, that cost there's no more moving on ups none of that no no, no. i tell you one one advertisers um a lot of the um the the legal, the lawyers for lawsuit have a bunch of uh, funny commercials, but they're mostly radio, like yeah. Top Dog right. Law. Yeah, that Top Dog Law. They, did your 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 dog have cancer? <laughs> <laughs> and while you were walking your cancerous dog across the street, did a truck hit you? Call Top Dog Law. I'm like, that's a long stretch for the, for the dog. <laughs> the I promise you, look up Top Dog Law commercials. They are out of control. <laughs> yeah. Damon, you know I'm in Atlanta, so we're the kings. Of the crazy lawyer commercial, I swear I they did. they make you want to get hit by a truck. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, man, that's you. a yeah. yeah, 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 day. Let me get my truck real quick. Amy, we're the right. Out Amy, there. we're the right is the queen, <laughs> and she talks to all the jocks like she went to school with them and everything. Right, she does the same right. thing here, you know. Mm -hmm. So y'all know it's, it's 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 a script around the country because I've heard I didn't it know that she. Was, I didn't. I didn't know she was national. I really didn't know. Yes. Like, yeah, she's here. here in Dallas too. Yeah. Hey, Amy, Amy, tough boy. Yeah, she and Vita Loca are like this. <laughs> <laughs> but the but the, the most the most humorous infomercial situation is uh, Miracle Spring Water late at night on BET. Miracle Spring Water. I'm not miracle gonna... Spring Water. It's, it's a, a televangelist type guy, and he oh, sells this right. Miracle Spring Water. And it's the disparity between the, the, the uh, blessings. Like for the for the black people, they might say, "Well, I've sprinkled it on all my bills, and my light bill got paid." Whereas <laughs> the white person, like we sprinkled Miracle Spring Water on this plot of land, and we bought this entire community. <laughs> <laughs> the miracles are different. It's ridiculous. <laughs> 
<laughs> racially tailored miracles. Yeah. Yes, it's ridiculous, man. <laughs> racially tailored miracles. <laughs> Thank you, Cameron. That's the term I'll be using going forward. <laughs> it, it, hey, hey, and it comes along with that pra- prayer cloth, too, that was wiped uh, uh, from my brow. And you, <laughs> you yes. get my holy sweat on this. Then, on this <laughs> to go with the you got to see it, Sybil. You got to yeah. see it. Um, we used to get those a lot when I was in Charlotte. And then, of course, that was uh, uh, just a, a, a city over from Tammy Faye and Jim Baker. And there was a mm. lot of that. We, we used to get a lot of those. But uh, uh, what about you, Cameron? Oh, this one's like uh, kind of local. But I remember like the Eagle Man insurance oh, yeah. <laughs> commercials. Yeah. And he would like, I've he got would like, something for you. <laughs> you have the egg, and like, wow, low rates, you know, like, <laughs> right? That's for me. <laughs> the irony was, Eagle Man laid an egg. How did the man, Eagle man... <laughs> How did, where did that happen in, 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 in all of our biologies? <laughs> Nothing, <laughs> and he laid the egg. And he laid an egg on the car where the door that falls off every single. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and they still use that same commercial today. I was like, "How the junk, the uh, the the car yeah, junk victory, plays out. Yeah, Victory yeah. Auto Parts." Yeah, I'm like, "How oh, are you wow, still using yeah. the same commercial from victory the '70s?" Now, I don't know if Victory Auto Parts is is a national, but if you used to watch no. WGN when you were growing up. Uh, that was, uh, and people, and my cousins knew Victory Auto Parts because they had WGN at that time. And it was like, uh, that old car, you know, and it was like, <laughs> it, it was, it was, it was a lot of fun. The to door watch. came completely off. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> like a, like a Boeing 740. No. Oh, damn. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I want to give a shout out to, I just got <laughs> hit.com. That is my, those are my guys and I love them. And, uh, absolutely. Uh, the the lawyers that I girl, you better call I just got hit dot com. Um, <laughs> these, are, these are little girls impersonating you know older people. Girl, I just got hit. Hang on, girl, you better call I just got hit dot com. And 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 you do. And then <laughs> you got these wonderful uh, uh, black men who are out there to to serve, and and they have helped friends of mine. So I just want to get and and they do great work in the community, not just in in their legal work, but they are uh, really terrific people in uh, their their bike giveaways and and their uh, shopping uh, uh, tours for for single moms and what have you. So it's really great. Um, my favorite one is the E Trade pick pickleball. Uh, game with the with the two kids, the babies, they're toddlers. Oh, yeah. and, oh and, and yes, they, yeah. And I, and I think the little black kid is voiced by Roy Wood Jr. If I'm not mistaken, that's probably that's what is, yeah. sounds like to me. But I just love those commercials and and like when they're you know they're kicking back in their little mini um uh, a, a formal suit to formal wear at a wedding mm-hmm. and uh, and until the kids come home you know and it's like <laughs> it just it, it tickles me so. Well, I'm um, twenty one. Hang on. Uh, let's uh, ask the folks if you want to uh, jump in here and let us know what you're thinking about and your favorite commercials. Our friend Michael Stallworth on Facebook, Shaq singing Ario Speedwagon, keep on loving you in the show. That gives me the willies. Um, Shaq singing, <laughs> just, <laughs> it, it, it doesn't even make me laugh. It just kind of gives me cringies. Um, but it is uh, a car insurance and he is very, he's very good spokesperson for the general. Uh, and Carnival Cruises. And then there's that. He hasn't. I haven't seen him do any chicken uh, commercials yet. Have you? No. He has Pizza Hut and uh, Icy Hut. Big, yeah. Was it uh, Papa John? Uh, yeah. Papa John. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Papa yeah. John. My bad. Yeah. 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 Same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Randall Andrews on Facebook says the Crown Royal commercial that features George McRae's "I Got Lift." I get lifted. I'm mm. not familiar with that one. No. Either. But it's a Crown Royal commercial. Crown Royal. Now, that would have been a great uh, Super Bowl commercial, hey, huh? Hey. Shout out to Jay Ivey for doing. Uh, I think he has one of the, 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 the liquor brands as well. The poet Jay Ivey. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. The Grammy yeah. Award winning poet. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yes. Of uh, the Allstate one, uh, he says on YouTube with Larry Bird is laughing my ass off. Jennifer Coolidge officiating a wedding hawking a lipstick elf commercial uh, cosmetic sticks out to me. She's also good on the Discover uh, commercials. Too. Yes, she is. Um, but no, that Larry Bird, that Larry Bird commercial is new. Uh, with yeah. yeah, that's very new. And I, to see Larry moving around like that, I was like, "Go ahead, Larry, <laughs> <laughs> get back in the commercials, Larry." 
I so my question about is, mayhem. is that really him moving? Like, look at him moving around, not you know, <laughs> looking, looking, looking spry again. Come on, you know Larry got that. I see magic in those. Uh, I think it's Sigma, Sigma commercials, not Sigma Sigma commercials, and they're calling him, you know, vet, and 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 he's <laughs> he's Uncle Joe, kind of moving a little slow. Yeah, in that yeah. commercial, but it looks yeah. spry chasing the bird. <laughs> Charlotte Bowen Bellamy says there's so many commercials dealing with meds too many on Facebook. Yeah. Are those funny to you? Are they, uh, do they entertain you? I they think she's just saying there's too many of them. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Cause they, Blame, they're, they're, uh, they they're disturbing to me when they give you more things that could go wrong with you. Exactly. After. That's yeah. the funny part. Yeah. Uh, shingles don't care. Says Dora LeVette. <laughs> <things on Facebook. laughs> that's the other one. Uh, that's the, uh, it's, I think it's for a um, for a laundry uh, sheet that you put in the dryer, dryer sheet, and then it's the sheet, and and it's the sheets. It's the, yeah. I just it's, I was like, how many times are they going to be able to get away with this before some little kid comes up and goes, "Mommy, it's, it's the, the sheet." sheet. <laughs> hey, I, <don't>, I, <laughs> I just know yeah. your reenactments are great. <laughs> Dad's clothing <laughs> on YouTube said, so I like the Spectrum commercials with comedian Kev on stage and the progressive insurance commercials. I love the Kev on stage uh, commercials. Yeah. Yes. He's really talented. And the other gentleman that is with him, I can't think of his name. Tony Baker? Yeah. 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 And um, and, and I've, I've seen the other guy uh, uh, to hear to hear more right. uh, he um he's been getting uh, for, what, what insurance company I, I forget what insurance he's been popping up a lot lately on uh commercials as well but marcy j said the stupid car shield commercials with vivica fox and ice oh. <laughs> uh, hey, <laughs> hey man whatever i was like they really get your checks go ahead and get your checks i'm the auntie and let auntie tell you because <laughs> yeah, ice t comes in and says shut up <laughs> I don't know. They're talking to her like a transmission or something. Somebody says something and he says, Shut up. <laughs> uh, oh my god. Uh, I there there are so many and, and I'm I'm guilty of this. I will, you know, you know, just fly through if I'm on on the DVR and just want to get through and, mm -hmm. and, and, and leave it. So I miss a lot. Yeah. Um, but there are some that are just, you know, like you said, at the Super Bowl, you do watch those. Z Walker yep. on Facebook said, I miss the uh, Wolfman furniture commercials. Call the Wolfman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Sylvia Crawford on Facebook says, Ice Cube is doing e commercial. Mm hmm. Ice Cube, doing, Ice Cube is going to get the check. Okay. No matter what. No yeah. matter what. We're getting yeah. the check. Yeah. Uh, Brendan McCutcheon said, on Facebook says our local ambulance chasers had whole rap songs made yep. for their commercials. Absolutely, Absolutely. yeah, Absolutely. That's, how, that's how well they're doing. Like, like they will, like you will not realize it's a it's a commercial until you get to the end, right? And you're like, wait, what? <laughs> right, exactly right. Yeah. They're catchy and everything. Uh, Jim Marshall Jr. on YouTube says, "Scruff McGruff, Chicago six zero six five six, take a bite out of grind." Yeah, uh, boy. Yeah, Scruff and Gruff and uh and my man about forest fires. You can prevent Only forest you fires. Can prevent. Yeah. Barbara Ferguson, where's the beef? Was an all-time favorite. Oh, yes, Clara yeah. Keller on the Wendy's commercial. Where's the beef? Um <laughs> and she really, I mean, she gave she created a whole new life for herself with that commercial. I don't know that the creators ever realized that one. Sybil Wilkes and Damon Williams, you remember the barbecue Bobby commercials? I take an order walking. Then the girl asks her friend to say, does bread come with this? Emmanuel Murphy. <laughs> 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 and, and it was nothing like the Moo and Oink commercials. Right. Nothing yeah. like the Moo and Oink. Yeah. You can find those commercials online now if you just search them. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're so yeah. classic. Yep. Yeah. Um, this is Yolanda's favorite as well, Brenda McCutcheon uh, on Facebook. Progressive insurance commercials about young people becoming their parents. Yeah, that's a good commercial. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. That's a great campaign. Yeah. 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 No, we, we don't do that. No, we don't. No. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> the down uh, button's already been pushed. Right, right. <laughs> I, I don't think that's how you take a selfie. <laughs> Talking to people in the elevator. Hey, so yeah. where are you going? You know, that's not your job. That's not your job. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the most recent one is with LL Cool J. And that's uh, the one, right. yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yep, yep. 
I, and there's the other one from my nephew. Although I did feel like one of those people the other day because I went to Yolanda and Ward's house and I was looking at, uh, it was uh, trash and recycling day and their cans were still out. And I looked at Ward's uh, recycling and it, it really did need cleaning off. Mm -hmm. uh, and I said, I'm not going to be, I'm, I'm looking for the cameras right now. Progressive <laughs> people are like, you are not going to clean that. It's a garbage can. <laughs> I, hey, hey, I saw that one. And yeah, no, mine stays pristine. I, I, I clean out my, I hold it out, baby. One time, <laughs> yeah. that's why I got so upset when somebody switched mine out. Oh. And, I was, and I opened it up. I'm like, this is not my garbage. What <laughs> 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 the hell is this? Look at this trash. Yeah, right. Man, when I tell you I walked up and down my street looking for my garbage <laughs> can, I was like, ain't no way in hell I put in all that work to keep this damn thing clean. And I got to deal with this. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Them things start to stink. You got to clean it yeah. out. You got, you got to, to clean it out. That's it's like if you live in a close area. Because it was like, we moved our backyard and our neighbor's garbage would just be there. Ooh. You could smell it. So I'm like, you yeah. got to clean it out. Especially in Georgia, get this hot. You got yeah. to clean yeah, but, it out. Yeah, but, but the recycle one shouldn't have trash. So that's when it's really, <laughs> that's when you're doing too much. That's, that, that's when you know they're not following the directions. Right. Yeah, exactly. You know, we're just throwing you know, stuff in there. Pizza boxes with all the oral spread all over the boxes, knowing that's what it's supposed <laughs> yes, to be. You cannot not recycle greasy cardboard, everybody. That's right. That's mm. right. Tell them, Officer Cameron. Um, so thanks for playing along with our little <laughs> game. Uh, we'll, we'll revisit that, too. Uh, also, I have one for you, uh, a, a, a commentary about um, your favorite um, add-ons on your food. Are you a guacamole person? Are you a barbecue sauce, a hot sauce person? Uh, and I thought that would uh, add to Med's uh, culinary yeah. genius. Um, yeah, so we'll no. talk about that next week. We'll, okay. we'll, we'll do that. Oh, yeah. Uh, I confuse great. service a lot with this one. But, yeah. <laughs> um, so shop, let's move to trending. And happy first night of spring, everyone. Spring will be sprung at 10.06. Central Daylight Time, 11.06 Eastern Time tonight. So some of us may see spring. spring. Um, others may uh, may not have seen it. Uh, we'll just enjoy the first full day of spring tomorrow. Um, but more sunlight. I think it's today that we have 12 hours of sunlight and 12 hours of darkness. Uh, so an equinox. all equal day. Yep. The vernal uh, equinox. Okay. We about Jayden? to turn it up. Where are yes. you going? What are you doing? What are your comedy gigs? Where, 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 where is the funny going to be? The funny is always available on Tubi now. <laughs> Last night with Damon Williams. Please stream it. But I'll be home for two weeks at Riddle. So I have a delay who is hilarious. This dude okay. is a high energy, hilarious dude. Then next week is sort of like a, a fundraiser for uh, Coco Brown, who lost her house in a oh, fire. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yes. So I'm asking everybody to come out and support her next weekend. But this weekend... I'll be at Riddles and next weekend as well. That's nice. And it's just really nice you to do that for Coco. She's what a horrible situation to lose your house. And I mean, even to the point where she's like, I know you all are texting me, but I don't and I'd like to return the text, but I don't know who you are because my phone was in the house. Wow. You know, that's yeah. how, how much she lost. She she came out with her baby boy and herself yeah. and the clothes on their back. So oh, yeah. um, God bless them. God bless him. Well, even yeah. if you can't make it to Riddles next weekend, the, all the proceeds are going to Coco Brown. So that's go on DamonWilliamsComedy.com and buy yourself a ticket, and we'd, we'd appreciate it. There you go. Absolutely. Good deal. Um, Med, what you got going on? Well, we're still trying to give away a Tesla. <laughs> 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 on, the, on the morning hustle, uh, we've been having a little uh, one thousand dollar cash grab uh, every day, and some of the answers. You know, I'm coming up with questions now uh, for this oh. contest, and, and I've been, you know, it's one of those things where when I started a month ago, uh -huh. and like we've had three winners since I've started, and like we didn't have three winners all year last year. What are you doing? We have a budget. <laughs> I, oh, was like, I was like, oh, oh. My fault. Okay. We'll make this harder. <laughs> Not a problem. We can, we can make this harder. Um, but no, we're in the middle. We're in the middle of that. Uh, this Freaknik um, documentary is uh, coming out. So uh, Thursday, we will have Jermaine Dupree and Uncle Luke in studio. Oh, I love Uncle Luke. <laughs> Join, joining us for uh, a nice little sit down to talk about Freaknik. And should anybody be worried uh, <laughs> about the documentary? 
as well as uh, <laughs> my girl uh, Giovanni Samuel. She'll be joining us next week. She is in the uh, Quiet on Set documentary. Oh, if, nice. you've, if you've heard about that, the, the yeah. Nickelodeon mm-hmm. child situation yeah. um, that, that they're doing a doc about. So she was featured in that, and she'll be joining us next week to talk about all the stuff behind the scenes because she was on all that. She was on the Raven, Raven Simone, um, you know, That's, That's a Raven, Raven. show. Yeah. Uh, so she has a lot of insight into what you know, what happened behind the scenes, especially with the child actors uh, that dealt with that. So we have a lot of stuff coming up on on the show on the Morning Hustle. Check your lo- local listings. <laughs> and Cameron, what about you? What do you got going on? Oh, uh, it is the um, it is the uh, kind of like the spring calm before the summer storm. I mean, okay. um, people in Chicago know that when it gets hotter, uh, the city just gets electric with activity. So. Uh, a lot of community-based organizations are uh, just uh, shoring up their safety nets to uh, keep the uh, to keep uh, kids safe. Um, likewise, uh, I've been um, doing some organizing with uh, the Advocacy Alliance for Black and Brown Unity. So uh, we've been going out into, into the neighborhoods, um, bringing Black and Brown people together, uh, just to explain to them that. Um, uh, we're, we're 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 talking about reentry. So, um, mm-hmm. explaining to them that um, giving a job to a black man doesn't take a job out of the hands of a migrant. Likewise, mm-hmm. um, there are a lot of issues that uh, unite us as people. And that since we're sharing the city together now, um, here's how you can be more tolerant. You know, here's how we can work t- together to bring about some change. Wow, that's a that's a big ask. Um, and yeah, because that- a lot of us don't know Spanish. <laughs> well, let's start there. Yeah. Well, in that case, it's a big kudo. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, you said ask. My ask. Bad. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but you know the the heat just you know tempers flare, and, mm-hmm. and we we have very little you know cool in us to to take a step away from something without jumping into it immediately. So that's uh, why we uh, should be legal. Yeah. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah, chill out. Chill. Like lake. Out. Violence prevention. There you Absolutely. Go. Um, Cameron, are you still working at the mini golf place? Uh, this summer, I will not be. Um, but I'll be over there, though. The coolest job. Oh, yeah. Super fun job. Uh, yeah. One of the best summer jobs I've, I've, I have ever had. That's cool. Um, congratulations to Pamela Sullivan. Uh, I made this reference earlier, a member of our It's Sybil crew. During the course of our of a conversation that we had last week, Pamela uh, shared that she recently retired. So I just want to tell her to enjoy your next chapter. And yeah. um, thanks for sharing that with us. Um, it is also, um, I was listening. I can't, <laughs> I can't find True TV on my uh, cable service. So uh, Ward White, if you know where True TV is, would you shoot me a, a note? Uh, watching the NCAA March Madness games have started. Uh, and I'm particularly interested in the first four because that's where the HBCUs go in and, and as a rule, go out. Mm-hmm. Uh, Grambling State Tigers and the Howard Bison will play in the first four tournament games. Um, the two HBCU men's basketball programs receive their seating and opponents from the NCAA and so it was pairing of uh, Howard playing number 16 Wagner this evening. And that started just about an hour ago. So I'm not sure where they are. Um, when I uh, first listened, when it first started, Howard came out, you know, with a bang and then just slowly uh, fell uh, back. But Can people are... bet on these games? Is Absolutely. Oh, Legal yeah. betting. Absolutely. I, I, I'm not a brackets person, but yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, wow. That's, you, wow. you, bet, you better be so betting. You yeah. better be betting. Like yeah. like legit fan duel bets. You can do yeah. that. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. With March Madness, really? Absolutely. You better wow. bet. Go ahead and bet. Uh, you know, down here in Georgia, I can't do none of that. In Illinois, you can, but I can't do that here. I've tried. Like I said, I've I You keep all that gambling. I'm telling you. I don't even like doing the squares. It used to be fun when you're in the office space. And right. You play yeah. Square. Yeah, but now it's you know it's 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 ridiculous, man. Yeah. How and, and and that kind of enthusiasm, like Med has, is is minimal compared to the way a lot of these people are. Look, brackets, bracketology. The, the the way that gambling is now, in about five years, you're gonna see a huge problem 
with this. Yo, because... if I can bet on the time CTA buses arrive, I will be a millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> right. But I'm just, make... I'm just saying the access to it and like these, like you have a lot of college kids having mm-hmm. access to gambling. Like before you'd, mm. you'd have to go to a bookie. You'd have to go to places you don't want to go. It's on your phone. And these college kids are are getting locked in and addicted. Yeah, early uh, into this and losing a lot of money, so it, it's it's going to be an issue. It's, it's really gonna be an issue. dangerous. It's yeah, really it's dangerous. Um, and it may determine some outcomes of some of the games because well, that's, oh, yeah. that's what they're thinking. I mean, look at you know Pete Rose lost everything pretty much. Well, in, in terms of his career, career. And his, uh, legacy, and his, yeah, his legacy uh, in baseball for gambling. Uh, and even though he said he never bet on any of his games or, or whatever, I'm like yeah, sure. Um, but that it, it has a way of, of grabbing gambling is an addiction and it has a way of grabbing uh, people and taking over their lives. But that's what's happening in, in, in the NFL. You have so many players get yep. suspended yep. for like, Calvin Ridley got suspended for a full season. Yeah, he was gambling on his phone. He was just placing bets. He was having and then some other people were having other people place bets for them. For them, yeah. You know, and they got busted and they're getting suspended and they're getting wow. you know multiple games seasons. So it's yeah. like the NFL, these sports leagues are getting into bed with the with the with the betting. Yeah. But then it's like, yo, what you know, now the players are getting suspended for it. But again, it's on your phone. They're not calling the bookie. They're no. not doing and it's the bookie right doesn't there. have to meet them around nope. the corner. No, nope. no, nope. nope. it is right, right there. there in their phones. And if you're in Florida and if you're in places like that. You're gonna get busted, man. FTC and you don't have like to worry about getting your knees broken. Nope. <laughs> yeah. Tony by Tony and 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 and, and, and big Luke. Uh, big right. Luke. Big one eye Luke. Yeah. Yeah. Hey pastrami yeah. over there, man. He's ready to talk to you. Right. <laughs> Why they call him pastrami? Wait till you see your knees. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the unfortunate thing though, um, as far as the outcome is concerned, if I have a, a relative that's in the NFL. I'd be like, hey, bro, I got big money on you to fumble in the first quarter. Right. You know, right. if things like that could be, it could be per- pervasive in the sport. And that's the unfortunate, real unfortunate thing about it. Or Damon, how about the, the streaker uh, in the Super Bowl? Mm-hmm. Who actually made a bet that there was going to be a streaker in the Super Bowl <laughs> and he won the bet <laughs> because he was the damn streaker. He put a that's, lot of money up on it. Crazy. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's <laughs> market I'm manipulation. Like, Genius. Talk yeah, about a sure bet. <laughs> they say there's no such thing as a sure thing. Well, that's mixed up. That pretty much was, yeah. yeah. And poor Bruno Mars, who had the allegedly the fifty million dollar debt to MGM, even though MGM came out quickly and said, "Oh yeah, that's not true." I'm a MGM. Shut up. <laughs> right. You're you trying to protect him. Yeah, right. no, no, that boy has an addiction problem. It, I, I believe it. I, I yeah. believe it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, tomorrow night, uh, so I'm, I'm not sure what the score is right now for, for Howard, and uh, it is Wagner. And for those of you keeping score, uh, that's one thing, but Wagner is a small school uh, in on, on one of the uh, – Staten Island in New York. So um, – and it's a, a small private school. And then tomorrow night, Grambling State Tigers are paired with Montana State Bobcats, and they'll be, also be on True TV. And that is tomorrow afternoon at 540 Central Time, tomorrow evening. And they're all playing in Dayton at the UD Arena. Uh, Sybil, Wagner is up 38-27 at halftime. Oh, thank you, sir, for that update. Uh, not a problem. Those results brought to you by FanDuel. <laughs> <laughs> you have a gambling problem. You should and, and that has and to you come at the Call 1-800. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> President Biden signed an extensive executive order to support women's health research yesterday. The executive order calls for the National Institutes of Health to invest $200 million in the, 200, uh, in the 2025 fiscal year into t- more than 20 new actions to address gaps in women's health research. He talked about this at the State of the Union address last week. Um, the research will target health issues unique to women and, and, and how it affects their men at, ancillarily. Uh, menopause, perimenopause, and endometriosis, which is a topic of conversation on this year's Bachelor. I don't know if you all have watched that and, or, or if anybody cares. Uh, it also will address <laughs> heart, attacks, <laughs> heart attacks, Alzheimer's, rheumatoid arthritis, and osteoporosis, health conditions women tend to experience after menopause, and look to expand resources for women learning about their treatment options. Now, $200 million is not a lot of money. No, um, pennies. 
not unless it's in my bank account, but I'm thinking, you know, over 20 different areas and talking about this and, and hoping to do some difference and uh, make a difference. The work will be done through several departments, including the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Department of Defense, Department of Veterans Affairs and the National Science Foundation. April Ed had a really interesting story last week about how uh, women vets are not being treated equally as the, the male vets, as their male counterparts, uh, when it comes to mental health care, like PTSD and things like that. And so now mm. they're making an effort. And so that's a great thing to hear, uh, but th they've been so far behind in other diseases that primarily affect men like prostate cancer or something like that, that trying to play catch up and make a difference, it's gonna, it's gonna take more money, uh, Mr. President. And I know you, you're stretched a little thin right now. Uh, but I'm hoping that you'll be able to find more money, um, just as you were for for the uh, cancer that you know, affected your son and so many others. I hope that you will also make sure that there's more money in the budget. And, and that, for the Ukraine. <laughs> and then don't and let's not forget that and Israel, uh, which which they're now coming out against. Um, tonight uh, mentioned uh, that you guys voted today in Illinois. Uh, Four other states are hosting the presidential primaries, even though Joe Biden and Donald Trump have, you know, made their move. They have they're over the top. They have all of the delegates they need to secure their party nominations. California, Illinois, and Ohio are also holding contests for state and local offices. In California, candidates are in line in the 20th congressional district, competing to replace former House Speaker, excuse me, Kevin McCarthy. Uh, who, you know, <laughs> he got kicked around so much for 15 rounds. And then finally, they one person said, no, you, we don't like what you're doing. And he, he left the, the speakership. And so now he is, uh, he quit. And uh, a couple weeks ago, he said, I'm not even going to the end of this term. I'm out. I'm, I'm going to go make some money. I'm going to make some real money. Yeah. Right. And uh, so now people are, are, are running for his spot. So check this out. This is why voting matters, ladies and gentlemen. The U.S. District Judge Aileen Cannon proposed to instruct jurors that a president has a sole authority to declare records personal, which legal experts say would amount to dismissing the case against Donald Trump. Aileen Cannon is a woman who was appointed to her position by Donald Trump, and she is hearing his case. The, the financial records case, not the financial, the security records case, where you know he stored everything in, in and took everything he possibly could from the White House, brought it down to Mar-a-Lago. And now they're like, you know, they, they, they open up the curtain for the shower and there's uh, security records. They open up, you know, the, the refrigerator and envelopes come piling out. Um, it's, this is why you vote, because this makes a difference in the people who are appointed to those federal judgeships. And it was if he was, I don't want to give him the credit for this, for being smart enough to know that, you know, some of these things, uh, some of the cases might come before a judge in Florida. And so, but this is where uh, she set an April 2nd deadline for Trump lawyers and prosecutors to engage on her proposed jury instructions, telling them, oh, he's got the right to do this. Legal experts called the judge's instructions insane and crazy, arguing she doesn't understand the Presidential Records Act, and legal analysts point out that her proposed tips for the scale so far in Trump's direction, the prosecutor, who is Jack Smith the, from, from the Justice Department, might ask an appeals court to remove her from the case. She might be hoping to get off, you know, taken off of that case. Now. Yeah. So maybe she's crazy like a fox. But for the most part, it is looking like, uh, you know, she, he is taking advantage of his appointment. Just as that, that, that should have been a foregone conclusion. If I appointed you to a judgeship, you should not be able you to not be trap my case. case. Yes. And, yes. Absolutely not. Yourself. Absolutely. And, and somebody, Damon, had to say that and they didn't, and she would not step away. And I, I don't think, and like you said, she might be crazy like a fox because she's like, if I do excuse myself, crazy, you I'm know, gonna get in trouble. I'm gonna get in trouble. So if I do something outrageous, you know what I'm saying? It may be a way for her to like she's she's got to kind of help me. <laughs> <laughs> help me get me <laughs> out of here. And so cause that that's way too obvious. I mean, that's come on. That's that's almost way like too obvious to be like, hey, what, what are we doing? Like what, right. what are we doing? Right. She's like she's drawing too much attention to it. So I'm like, she might be trying to get up out of it. That could be. That could very well be. 
Um, it'll be interesting to watch and see what happens with poor Judge Aileen Cannon. Um, moving to entertainment, the Swifty effect is, well, it's Swift. There's a rumor that Taylor Swift's boyfriend, Travis Kelsey, the NFL player for the Kansas City Chiefs, is in discussions to host a reboot of the quiz, quiz show, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? That's going to be on Amazon wow. Prime. Taylor Swift got him that deal? Well, I don't think, <laughs> honestly, uh, yes. I don't think yes, she did. know who he was. I mean, Amazon is going to be the, and so they, you know, they, they show the games, but, you know. Amazon hosting it? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So I'm thinking, you know, and everybody's like, well, come on, Travis, come on, do this. Come on. And, and you think your girlfriend will show up? Um, is Travis Kelsey smarter than a fifth grader? That's Probably, not. Probably not. He's, he's smart enough in one way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To get one of the wealthiest women in entertainment. Yeah. Because yeah. she ain't his type. I've, yeah. You know, yeah. Look at his previous girlfriends. Tell right. her ain't his type. And look at her previous boyfriends. Uh, not, they, mm -hmm. Definitely nope. not. Nope. 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 Now. I'll say this because he won like athlete of the year mm -hmm. uh, and, and there's no way in hell he should have won that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> God bless America. Like, like this is literally one of his worst years ever in, in the NFL and he won in lion slide. You know, the Swifty effect is strong mm -hmm. with that one. Mm -hmm. Yep. God, he better not mess this up. <laughs> <laughs> that's what everybody I think that's what his brother told him too. It's terrifying. <laughs> you can't mess this up. And if y'all break up, it better be clean. It better right. be clean, boy. Woo! Cause but, you're done. <laughs> something's gotta be good when you're, you know, you're going, you know, traveling a gazillion hours to go here and to come back to a Hollywood party and then go back and look, God bless you, God bless him, but Hey, mm -hmm. you stuck, brother. <laughs> <laughs> like glue. Like glue. <laughs> All right, let's close out, guys, with our jewel. Good. We're talking about health this week. Uh, check out our series on Life's Essential 8. We're going to be doing a special show next week about that. And um, good health enables us to enjoy our lives with minimal physical limitations. Uh, and, and try to tell us that today as we were doing our hip stretchers and wideners and, and all that kind of stuff uh, in our little yoga class today. Oh, God. Um, so uh, check this out. Our partnership with American Heart Association continues. We're very grateful for that. And we're going to be talking about Life's Essential 8 in the newsletter today. We talk about uh, maintaining your good cholesterol. Uh, other days we talk about how to quit smoking, maintaining a healthy weight, getting exercise, the foods that you put on your diet and, and such. Plates. Yeah, yeah. And you have those pretty pretty uh, colorful plates, right? So um, thank you guys. I appreciate you all. And I hope to see you all again soon. And uh, go Howard. <laughs> <laughs> hey, go buy some work to do. Uh, aloha.